What if I told you there was a unique offering coming to PC and consoles in 2022 that is a skill-based 1v1 action fighting game? Would you be interested? Now add to that, one hit can kill you. Let's talk about it. So Coach's Corner did an interview with Quale Games producer Rob Middleton about this new fighting game that's coming out in 2022 titled Die by the Blade. Y'all should know by now how big of a For Honor fan man I am. And if you're new, you now know. So with this game having samurai flavor to it, I was interested to at least know more. So Die by the Blade is a samurai and punk infused 1v1 fighting game where one hit can kill you. Doesn't always happen, but it can happen. And I love the drama of that. I took an excerpt from Coach's interview so you can hear it from the producer himself. Yeah, so what we mean by weapon focused is that in loads of fighting games, when you choose your character, that character defines what you're able to do. Um, in Dive of the Blade, um, when you choose your weapon, that weapon defines what you can do. So any character can use any weapon. Um, and so long as you, you know, you know that weapon's moveset, combos, um, inside out, then, it, you know, your character is, is less important. An interesting fact about this game is that your moveset is weapon based and not character based. No matter who your character is and what customizations they have, it won't affect the moveset and your capabilities with the weapon. With it being weapon based, I like how they are saying no matter who you are, you must master the weapon. I would like to see a character specific trait able to be unlocked, but that's just a personal preference. I'm a fan of what they're going for, and many have compared this game to Bushido Blade from what I've been reading. I was an Xbox player and I don't remember that game ever making it to Xbox. One game that you can make a more recent and comparable comparison to is Hellish Court. For the ESB faithful that watch this, Box and Fanatico played this game in August 2021. I'll put a link to that in the description. Back to Die by the Blade. There will be a single player campaign where you can roam and seek out fights in the different arenas set up in the environment. You'll be able to interact with NPCs, but on what level? Mm, I haven't seen, so the campaign will be a little more than just running from fight to fight, which is a good thing. Nobody wants to just be out there, oh, I just beat this person, let me just run over here to this hut and then beat another person. You, you gotta have levels to it. There's gotta be layers to it. So I'm glad to hear that there's gonna be some other type of interaction and hopefully it's not just you finish a fight, you go interact, they say, oh, this, this person's been stealing my crops or whatever, and then you got to go fight somebody else. I hope there's a little more to that. Another thing I hope to do is to be able to pick up some rewards for completing the campaign. You know, I, I would like as a player to be rewarded for the effort and time that I put into the campaign or even finding hidden items that tell the story further of the warriors of the world. There will be a tournament mode where you can put together offline and online tournaments for those of you that have friends. There's also going to be a practice mode, which is separate from the tutorial mode. This will be a great ad and a necessary one because in practice mode is where players will be able to test hitboxes, measure the distance from your opponent and see the tracing of the weapon. The reason why I say that's an important ad is because players can understand why they get hit with certain attacks and also what will potentially leave them vulnerable. And that will ultimately help players be less frustrated with losing by offering them a method to improve. Because there's nothing worse when you you jump in a game, yeah, you see the move set and whatnot. You go in, you play online, or even if you're playing offline against friends, you're like, what the heck? How is he hitting me with that? There's no way he should hit me with that. Well, then you can jump into this practice mode and you will see the distance. You will see that, oh, okay, now I know why I was hit with that. You know, that particular weapon in the top position can actually reach me. From the side position, it cannot. And so, and that's important to learn and to pick up on in any game that you play. You gotta be able to learn those nuances about it. So I'm glad they're gonna have that mode. It's very important. It's important in For Honor. It's gonna be important in this. One thing I was curious about is will there be cross-play? So I started scouring the Discord and the question had been asked in the past and it appeared that Sony may be impending things, but that was like back in 2020. So I personally asked the question again. I have not received a response. And if I did, maybe I'll update it in the comments below. But looking at some of the other questions asked, you don't always get a quick reply, which is fine. I mean, those guys are busy. 
but I just wanted you to know. In the interview, Coach asked about the possibility of Die by the Blade being a live service game or games as a service. Gas. I say gas. I don't know if you just say G-A-A-S, but I say gas. Let's just go with gas. And it's unclear on the answer. Rob Middleton sounded up in the air if Quale would be in the position to support the game in that manner. But it was also not ruled out. But the positives is they do have plenty of weapons, arenas, and customization options that they are looking to release. A release of 2022 was hammered home, and that's positive to hear, at least a release date, because we're not getting that at ESBC. But they're not sure if the game will be released on PC and consoles at the same time yet. It could be PC released in late 2022, and then consoles come around first quarter of 2023 or even later. Something that I would like to see in the game are unique executions. And while they have stated that they will have finishers, same as executions, just they call them finishers, it sounds like it would take a learning curve in order to pull it off. I didn't see any word as to how unique the executions will be to each weapon. Instead, we know that the finishers will be able to execute based on combo skill and timing. If you follow this channel, then you know I'm a big boxing fan and I've been covering ESBC, Esports Boxing Club, I don't know, as we wait for the game to announce release date. I can't help but notice some of the parallels between Die by the Blade and ESBC. They both have been in development for a few years. They both were planning on releasing in 2021 and they had to change course. Yes, I know COVID played a large role. However, there were still other games that were released, right? Right. Plus they both incurred larger team and more support in the process. And I think that contributed to the change of direction, which are both good things for us as gamers. Die by the Blade now has a publisher on board in Quale and are planning the release later this year. As stated, if we flip back over to ESBC, SCI or Steel, Center, Steel City Interactive, excuse me, is the publisher and the developer. And they have not re-announced the release date as of yet. That's the only difference really between those two. There's a lot of speculation of it being in quarter four of 2022, but nothing is concrete from SCI themselves. So call this flimsy parallel, or maybe you want more info as like proof, or maybe you're just saying, well, this is just gaming in general. And you're probably all right on all accounts, to tell you the truth. It was just something that stood out to me when I was looking up information because I was excited about this game when I saw the interview. And I was like, oh, they delayed like SCI. Oh, they were gonna release in 2021, just like ESPC. So I was just looking at those things. And in the moment, I was like, ah, oh, that'd just be interesting if we just talked about it a little bit. So don't jump down my throat on it. Either way, if both of these games are released close to each other and there's a possibility it might happen given where they are, we are in for a fun stretch of gaming in late 2022, early 2023. While I'm leaving you with this Die by the Blade trailer, keep in mind that they did move to the Unreal Engine 4.27.2 and even they realized their character models had a plastic look and you might notice that. Among other issues, they have since worked to improve the game and focus on some of the more important smaller things like hair, along with other improvements. So I hope you enjoyed this preview of Die by the Blade. Add it to your wish list on Steam. Wait for it on console, which I more than likely will. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm out.